Today we're going to be taking a look inside the Honda Civic to see what's inside and how it works. Now we're going to start by taking a look under the hood of the Honda Civic. This one is the turbocharged model which means that it has a 1.5 liter 4 cylinder engine here situated transversely for front wheel drive and then over here on the driver's side we have a continuously variable transmission. Now we're going to start by taking a look at the air intake system on the Honda Civic. This being the turbocharged model it's a little bit more intricate than a naturally aspirated engine. Air is going to be drawn from underneath the hood down into this vent over here it's going to be sent down inside of a resonator box and then come up through this air filter. The air filter is going to pass by a mass airflow sensor and then head over here to the turbocharger. Now Honda did make some changes to improve the efficiency of the turbocharger but you can see where this air inlet here bolts directly to the turbocharger. It's then going to be sped up by the airflow coming off of the exhaust over here. The exhaust itself is going to continue down into this catalytic converter and the pressurized air is then going to head down through this pipe into your air to air intercooler at the bottom. That intercooler is located at the bottom half in front of the radiator. You can see that through the grill here and that's going to help to cool down some of that charged air that was warmed up by the exhaust gases. Now from underneath the vehicle you can see here's where the pipe comes off of the turbocharger and goes into the intercooler in front of the vehicle in the bottom of the radiator area. It's then going to get cooled off and then sent through this pipe over here which is your charge pipe which is going to go up and over the transmission. The pressurized air is then going to head out through this plastic pipe over here and then out to the back here where you have a drive-by wire throttle body that's going to regulate the amount of air going into the air intake plenum which is this plastic piece over here which is ultimately bolted to the head and feeds the boosted air into the engine. Next we're going to take a look at the fuel system on the Honda Civic. You can see we've got this fuel line over here kind of dangling loose. That's going to feed fuel over to this high pressure fuel pump. That's because this engine only has has direct injection. You can see underneath this little sound deadening here is where the high pressure fuel pump lives and it's going to be driven off of the intake camshaft at the back here. Now the high pressure fuel pump is then going to send fuel down underneath the fuel rail which is underneath the intake manifold. You can't really see it. There's a little piece of it sticking out over here but that is essentially going to inject fuel at very high pressure into the combustion chamber. Now of course the disadvantage of having direct injection only is that you might have to clean the intake ports periodically because you don't have that gasoline injected into this airstream before it goes into the engine. Now taking a look at the top of the engine here you can see we've got our four ignition coils and that's going to make for very easy spark plug changes. Over here we do have a plastic valve cover and this engine takes 0 W 20 weight oil with a dipstick located over here. Alright so here we are underneath the Honda Civic and you can see over here on the passenger side we've got the oil pan and this blue oil filter. Then over here on the driver's side we've got the transmission pan. Now taking a look underneath here we do have a metal alloy oil pan. Here we've got the oil filter which is pretty easy to access once you remove that closed out panel that was underneath here. And here's the drain port. This setup should make for some very easy oil changes once you've got that panel removed. Now from underneath here, just in front of the oil filter, we've got a better look at the AC compressor as well as the drive belt down from here. Now the PCV system is very simple with just one valve that comes straight off the valve cover and goes right into the intake. Although it goes right before the turbocharger so it could probably gum things up if you burn oil. The Civic has three main engine mounts. You've got two on the top here, one on the transmission side. You can see it underneath the battery here and one over here on the engine side. Now down underneath here we do have our third engine mount. That is mostly a torque mount to control the sway. And the body of it is made of a rigid plastic. Now taking a look at the front part of the engine here on the passenger side. Down underneath this engine mount is actually the timing cover and underneath that timing cover is a timing chain so that means that this engine does not need to have a periodic timing belt service. Over here we've got the exhaust camshaft and on this side we have the intake camshaft. Now both of those camshafts have variable valve timing control through a VTC system for cam phasing. In addition Honda has also added a VTEC system to this generation of Honda Civic which adds a variable lift system the way the old cars used to on the exhaust side only. You don't really need it on the intake side because you got a lot of air moving in with that turbocharger. Now just in front of that timing chain cover is the drive belt setup. You can see there's a single drive belt. We've got the crank pulley down at the bottom there. And then at the back here it's easy to make out the alternator. Then over here this guy is your auto belt tensioner. It's actually a hydraulic tensioner. Now moving over here to the front of the engine that belt is going to come around to the water pump which is over here. And then the AC compressor located way down below over there. Now unfortunately accessing some of these components is really difficult. If you need to change the water pump in one of these cars the manual actually requires you to remove the turbocharger just because it's so close to it in order to get to those bolts and then kind of snake it around these lines to get it out. 
In addition, getting to the alternator, although it's pretty easy to access at the back here, requires you to remove the exhaust pipe over there and snake it down underneath the bottom, just because you can't get it up the top here. It's pretty difficult to work on. Now from underneath here, you can see this is the alternator and its bracket that holds it in. Once you got it out, you will have to remove this exhaust pipe over here and kind of snake it out between here and the subframe. Here's one thing I don't like. The washer tank here is actually buried inside of the fender, just like German cars. So maybe if you tap on this fender, you could crack your washer tank. But even worse than that is this little hose that comes out for here. Seems kind of weak and you could bend over and probably break that. This hose over here seems like an afterthought because they've just put this piece on top of here. After a while that could wear down and break. Now taking a look at the continuously variable transmission. Looking over here, you can see we do have our dipstick for your fill port when you do have to change your transmission fluid. At least they mark that and make that nice and accessible without removing anything. Now if you follow those two coolant lines, you can see it goes to a heat exchanger. It's actually a transmission fluid temperature warmer that helps to warm up the fluid to optimal levels when the engine is cold. And it also helps to cool it down if things are getting too hot. Now inside of there actually houses the transmission strainer, which is what's going to strain out any excess particles that get stuck in the system. Now in addition to that fill port, it looks like I found another fill port located over here at the back of the airbox. Now taking a look at the transmission from underneath, all you got is a drain port for this transmission pan. This does have a traditional transmission pan which holds the fluid inside. And that's pretty much it. You've got the axles up at the front here which are going to come out of the transmission to drive the front wheel. Now just above that axle you can see here we've got the starter motor. It lives in a really tight spot here, so accessing is pretty difficult. You will have to remove this exhaust pipe, and good luck with that when this car gets old and rusty. Now looking at the Civic suspension setup, you can see we have a two-piece subframe here. The back part of the subframe here, where your steering rack mounts to, is actually made of aluminum, whereas the front part here that comes up to the front is made of a stamped steel. Now looking at the suspension setup from underneath, we've got our sway bar link over here. We do have a stamped steel lower control arm, with a bolted on ball joint over here. And then from the back here you can see the knuckles are actually made of steel. Now unfortunately changing bearings on one of these means that you're going to have to take it to a press because there's no bolt on bearing here, it's a pressed in design. Taking a look at the front suspension on the Honda Civic here, you can see we've got a McPherson strut front suspension here with the coil up top and the shock absorber over here. The shock absorber attaches down to this steel knuckle over here using a single pinch bolt. Now one thing I don't like about this pinch bolt design is that the strut has to sit inside of this steel knuckle here and when it comes time to change your strut, this often gets rusted inside of here. Now the front here you can see you've got our sway bar link that mounts up to the strut over here and then down at the sway bar way down at the front here. Now looking around the suspension you can see down over here we've got a stamped steel lower control arm and that's going to mount up to the subframe over in this location here. Now replacing a control arm is a little interesting here because you do have this bolt for the front bushing. Now if you back this bolt out enough you're going to crash into the sway bar so you might have to disconnect that and swing that out of the way. The back here is your standard Honda bushing that's just bolted up to the subframe. Now over here from the side you can see this is the aluminum piece of the new subframe that they've made whereas the front part over here is actually made of stamped steel so they've actually used both materials together to form a subframe. Now in addition here we have our inner and our outer tie rods that mount to this knuckle. And here we are looking from the bottom here where you can see the bolted on ball joint where it bolts onto the knuckle over here. At least they still kept this a separated piece as opposed to having an integrated ball joint so you can change it separately. Now taking a look at the rear suspension on the Honda Civic, you can see we've got a multi-link setup here. The upper control arm here kind of bolts up to the subframe and comes over to this aluminum rear knuckle. Over here we've got three bolts that bolt on your control blade which is going to bolt up to the body itself. Then at the top here we have our shock absorber. And looking at the back here, once again we've got our shock absorber that's going to mount down to this lower control arm here, which is actually a bedpan. It's a stamped steel lower control arm. And this one's got the spring here that's going to attach straight up to the body and then over to the subframe at the back there. So looking around the rear suspension here, you can see if we come in here, a very small stabilizer bar link that mounts to that lower bedpan arm. And then it goes to the sway bar, which is going to go over to the other side. Our subframe here is actually made of stamped steel, unlike the front where it's an aluminum and stamped steel composite. You can see this here is our lower lateral link that's going to also bolt to the subframe and that's going to bolt down to the knuckle at the bottom here. Now here you can see where that arm is going to bolt to the knuckle. The knuckle itself is made of aluminum. This here is where your shock absorber is going to mount and then of course your bedpan arm at the back here. Now that front arm is going to go up here and mount up inside of the body cavity over here. And for all you guys who like to camber out your Honda Civics, I found the cam bolt over here. It's actually part of this lower bedpan arm that holds the spring. And here's another look at this little tiny stabilizer link. It's so short, just fits in between here. And then this here is the sway bar. Again, its diameter is pretty small. So definitely could upgrade that if you want to improve your handling. 
Taking a look at some of the electronics underneath here, we do have our fuse box, which is pretty easy to access right at the front here. Over here we've got our battery, at least that's not buried in the fender or something. And over here we have the ECU. Now one thing I don't like about the ECU is right up next to the front of the vehicle, so if you do get into an accident, it's pretty easy to damage and expensive to replace. Now taking a look at the cooling system on the Civic, you can see we've got a radiator located right at the front here, as well as the radiator fans down here and the radiator cap. It's pretty easy to access and work in between here. There is enough room to get my hand in between here to get things disassembled. However, in order to change the radiator out, you do have to remove the front clip of the vehicle, including the front bumper, so that makes for a lot of labor. And here's a look at the back of the radiator from underneath. You can see we've got dual cooling fans at the front here. Now the basic cooling setup starts at this junction over here where we've got our upper radiator hose that's going to go into the radiator. The lower radiator hose is going to come down over there and be sent into the engine through this thermostat which is in this plastic housing and then it's going to circulate through the engine Remember we do have the water pump up at the front here which is what's going to circulate everything. It's just a mechanically driven water pump. And then we've got the coolant jug located over here. Another thing is this radiator support is made of a composite plastic which is nice and structurally hard. However, if you do get into a minor collision in the front and this cracks, then you're going to have to replace the entire thing. You can't really bend it back like metal. Now looking at the exhaust setup on the Honda Civic, you can see we've got the integrated exhaust manifold, but Honda's made some changes here by pairing off cylinders 2 and 3 and 1 and 4 separately so they're not fighting each other as if they would in a single port. Here you've got your air fuel sensor. It'll be then sent down over here to the catalytic converter area, but before it does that it has to pass through this turbocharger and turn that compressor wheel. Here you can see we've got our oil lines that go to the turbocharger, and over here you've got our intake Side, which is what pressurizes the intake air going through that charge hose over there. Now the exhaust gases is then going to head down through this catalytic converter and then down underneath the engine to the back. Now looking at the catalytic converter and the exhaust from underneath, you can see we've got a flex pipe over here. Then it's going to go up and over the subframe and then towards the center muffler. Continuing back from the exhaust setup, you have your mid muffler over there. Now on this model, it's got dual exhaust, which is where it splits out over here and it goes to a muffler over on this side and then one over on this side. Now taking a look at the braking system on the Honda Civic, you can see we've got a traditional brake master cylinder over here with a brake reservoir. The brake booster itself is just your typical vacuum driven brake booster. However, because this is your turbocharged engine, the manifold pressure can vary as well as it has a start stop system. So they've come up with putting a vacuum pump located over here, electrically driven. And that vacuum line is going to run all the way over there in order to power that vacuum pump. Now that brake booster's got lines that are going to come over here to the ABS module which is going to control the traction, stability control, and any autonomous braking features on this vehicle. Now taking a look at the brake setup on the Honda Civic is fairly straightforward. We do have a floating caliper design with a single piston inside and we've got our disc rotor that's ventilated up at the front. Now taking a look at the rear brakes on the Honda Civic, they are a disc rotor, they don't have any drums anymore, and it is on a floating caliper design over here. One thing I noticed is that they actually use only a single rotor screw anymore. For the older Hondas they used to use two rotor screws. I wish they would just get rid of both of them because when they rust out or stripped out, they're pretty difficult to get out. In addition, we do have an electric parking brake. There's no more mechanical parking brake on this. And here's where the motor is going to sit. Now looking at the steering system on the Honda Civic, this uses a dual pinion steering system. So you've got the normal driver steering shaft that comes down to manually steer the car on the driver's side. Then over here on the passenger side, you can make out the electric power steering motor that sits on the rack on its own pinion on this side. And here's a look at the fuel tank. It's actually made of plastic. And if you go further up inside of there, you can see the EVAP canister. And that's pretty much a look under the hood and underneath the new Honda Civic. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.